In today's video I'm going to show you guys how to register and do the basic setup on Sage Accounting. Good day. My name is Heinrich Huvier. I'm an accountant and I've been in the accounting industry since 2008 and I've been working on Sage since 2009. So I've got many, many years of experience on this accounting package. Um, maybe before you start, remember just to give the video a like, subscribe to my channel as well. If you guys are looking for a new accountant for your business, remember to get in touch with us as well. We've got a website www.saaccountingnetwork.co.za and we've got many different accountants all over South Africa that will be able to service your business needs. Also, just another note as well, if you've got a paid SAID subscription, remember that I give away free half an hour consultations with the people. I'm going to share the link of that video at the top of here and also in the description below. And then let me jump down to the video so I can show you guys how to exactly step by step do the registration and the basic setup in SAGE. Yes, and so let me quickly share how it works. So obviously you're busy watching my video at the moment, and then you'll see in the description of the video itself, there is a link over there that says, if you want to sign up for Sage, then please use this link. It will open up a link like this, where you have to complete all your details over here. I've already done it on the next slide over here, so you can see over here I've completed my details, SA County Network, my details, phone number, I've created a test account just for us to do this registration, then after that you're going to say sign up. Just one thing to note, please keep my referral code in there because obviously because I'm a Sage advisor, I get some brownie points from them when people sign up using my code. So after you hit the sign up thing, there's going to be a, a OTP that you have to enter and then once that is done, you will be able to access your Sage account. Let me quickly jump over to Sage itself. So I've already done that part over there. By default, they normally send you an SMS. If it doesn't work, then after a while, you get the option to do an email verification. So you can click either both of those ways and it will take you to the registration. So once you've done the basic registration, you use a username and password and log into the system and then you will be locked. Then you'll be welcomed with, with this screen over here. So the first screen over here that they ask you is to strictly um, the protection of personal information, you can say set up now, and then after that, you is going to take you to the company setting screen, but we're going to talk about it now. They're going to ask you how long you want to keep your information for. We normally by default try and keep it as long as possible, and then they just ask you for a reason, so you just say legal. So let me quickly just give you a quick browse through of what you need to know of how the program works. So if you can start at the top of here, you can see the main interfaces of you. You've got a home, you've got like a dashboard, you've got a quick view. Everything to do with customers is going to be on this tab over here. I've got a separate video on that. Everything to do with supplies, you'll find it over there. Everything to do with your items, if you work with stock, that is the place where you're going to find it. I've got a separate video out on all the banking stuff, so which you guys can go watch over there. The accounts is something that you won't really work that often for, but it's just basically the backbone of the, the accounting package. The accountant's area is also an area that you won't worry too much about. And the reports are quite interesting to work through as well. And you can see over here is where the basic setup happens over here. So you can see if you go to change company settings, it will take you to the screen that we're busy with now. So starting from the top, you can have to work your way through here on the left hand side going all the way down. So you can see basic company information. It's your company's name, your telephone number, your email address. You can put in the CC email as well. So any correspondence that you send out to your clients, you'll be CC'd on that. And then obviously your postal address and then the physical address and other company information. Once you've completed that part over there, you're going to hit the save button and then you can go to the next one over here. Additional company information, you can see that they ask you for the statutory information, company tax number, registered name, registered number, the tax office, the city, province and country. So the information that they put in over there doesn't appear on any documents. So it doesn't go out to your customers and stuff. It's more basically just for the sake of completeness so that you've got a database of your information as well. And the next little block here, yeah, tax practitioners details and companies contact such contact information. This is quite interesting. Sage is starting with the interface where you can actually file your VAT returns through Sage Accounting itself, and that's the reason why they ask for this information. So if they submit the VAT return on your behalf, then it's going to pre-populate this information onto your return, and that's the reason why they ask for that information. This is really, really cool, and I think I'm really excited about that. <clears throat> the next button that you get there is the thing called Customer Zone, and I think these are one of the really cool things about Sage, is that you've got this option of a Customer Zone. So you can see on the screen, you've got two options to say that you want your clients to see the invoices and quotes only, or invoices and accounts history. We by default prefer to use the second one. The reason being that if you send your invoices and stuff
stuff out to your clients, they will be able to access their, their, their customer zone as the client itself. And on that customer zone, they'll be able to see the whole history of all the interaction between you and them. So they can go see, check out all the quotes, all the invoices, all the statements, all the payments that you've got. So, so it, it actually relieves a lot of the support work on your side because if somebody phones you and says, listen, I'm looking for the invoice that I sent through in January, you can just point them to the customer zone. So listen, go log in over there. They can download all the invoices, see what payments you've got on the system. So that's a really, really cool functionality that you must really encourage your clients to use as well. So that is good. Invoice and, and accounts history. We're going to hit the save button over there. And um, no, not yet. Let's quickly go pop around to the other ones. Um, uh, go away. <clears throat> so um, just jumping back to company details. We were talking about customer zone. Online payment gateway. So if you do work with payment gateways online once, you can see that you can link it up over there. That would be like Paygate and that type of stuff. You can see there's a little button for net cash if you do work with that. And then you can see here we start looking at the general settings. So the first thing is your financial years. And you can see by default that it takes you to the current financial year. But let's say for instance you decide that you've got a real bookkeeping that you have to do, that you have to catch up, then you can always make that selection to say that you want to run your reports and stuff in the previous financial year. So that's just some place where you can um, do that setting over there. They've got the option of lockdown dates, but that's something that your accountants would normally work with. The rounding, I don't think you need to be concerned about that. You can see regional settings. So this is just where you change the currents, currencies and stuff like that. Customer and supplier settings. So here's something interesting over here. And the only thing that I would suggest is that you tick that little box at the bottom. If you've got a small business, so they say there, use account as default document line type selection. So when you work on Sage, they give you two different types of ways that you can do your accounting. The one is where you work with items, where you physically go and sell and buy and sell items so you can keep track of your stock, um, which is fine. We'll, we'll get to that when we do the other videos. And the other one is when you work with accounts. So the problem that you've got with items is that you add another step to the accounting practice because then the place where the income gets recognized is when you start working with items. So we tell the people by default, well, to use accounts, it just simplifies the system and you're taking one step out of the accounting process. So it makes it a lot easier to work with. So that's my recommendation that you guys work with accounts instead of working with items. <clears throat> we can discuss that further, but that is just my, my opinion about that. Item settings, so if you do work with items, you can see there's a couple of settings over there. Uh, outstanding balances, you can read through this to say from which date they start reflecting your outstanding balances, due date, invoice date, and then you can see over there is your personal information, and that is that same screen that we were looking at just now. I don't know why I didn't save, but you can make your selection, say 10 years, and then over there we're just going to say legal. <clears throat> from there, we can see we can jump down to the VAT settings. So you can choose between three different things, where they talk about invoice base, payment base, or no VAT. Most small businesses would be no VAT. So if you click that little thing over there, then it takes out all the VAT processing out of the, the equation. The other two options, invoice base, remember that all businesses registered in South Africa is registered invoice base. You haven't got the option to work with payment base or invoice companies, registered companies, always invoice base. If you're trading as a sole proprietor, under certain, certain conditions, you have the option to be registered on payment basis. And basically the difference between the two is the day that you create the invoice, that day you're liable to pay the VAT over to the receiver of revenue. The day you make a purchase, even if you haven't paid for it, you can allow to claim the VAT on that invoice again. If you work on the payment basis, it means that if you issue an invoice, only once that customer pays you, then you're liable to pay the VAT over to SARS. But the other side is also true. If you buy stuff from suppliers, only the day that you make the payment to the supplier, then you're allowed to claim the VAT back on that invoice. So that's basically the big difference between the two. But this video is not about VAT. I just wanted to explain to you guys the basics about that. <clears throat> so we just, for the purpose of our demo, we're not going to work with VAT for now. And then documents and statements. You can see these your statement messages. So if there's certain messages you want to appear in your statements, you can add it over there. Document number, so this is also quite interesting. If you're changing from one system over to another system, let's say for instance you've been working on, on QuickBooks and your last invoice number there was number 100 and you want your next invoice number of year to be 101, that is the place you would change that. <coughs> Statement or document descriptions, this is also quite interesting. I would personally just leave it like this by default, um, but unless if you do use other um, names for 
or some of your documents. So it means it's like a sales order. If you want to call that something else, you can go change the name over here. If your customer invoices, the original document is a tax invoice, and you can see the copy name shows copy tax invoice. So you can go change that over there to say tax invoice as well. But I know that if you send a copy of the invoice, you have to leave it as a copy. Okay, let's quickly move on. Customer document settings. Oh, customer document messages, so the message at the bottom of your quote. So if you want to say that the quote is valid for 30 days, 50% deposit will be seen as acceptance of the quote. That is the place we would put in. You put in your bank details and stuff over there as well. Same with the customer invoices. We normally prefer to put your 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 your, your bank details over there into that line so that it appears by default onto your invoices over there. Supply document messages isn't something that you would work on, on a very, a very often. And then the invoice and statement layout. So you can go choose what your invoice actually looks like. You can see over there, there's a link where you can go see what they all look like. The one that we prefer to use is this one over here. That's his simple layout. That's just a nice and clean um, template that you can use for your invoices. So that's just our recommendations. You can see over here is the branding. So if you want your logo to appear on the invoice, you can go look for that invoice and you can say choose file, see where you've saved your logo and then after that you can upload it and then the logo would appear. You've got the option over here to say that you want it at the left top, left right, where you want your logo to appear. You can see there's a couple of other buttons over here where you can see use it to find fields. So if there's additional stuff you want to appear on invoices and stuff, that is where you would put it. Email signatures. This is also quite interesting. You can see that you can see that they've got a default one for, for quotes, one for invoices, credit notes, and they should be yes the place where you can manage your signatures. So if you want your description of the email to look different, you would set it up over there. Multi-currency. Um, so you guys who do work with multi-currency, and there's a separate module that you would have to buy for that to be able to work with dollars and rands and all that type of stuff. Once you finish with the screen, the basic setup is done on Sage. And then after that, remember the next video, definitely worth watching, is the one where I talk about customers and invoicing, obviously suppliers and supply payments, and then obviously I've got the banking one, plus many different videos as well. I hope this helped you guys. Remember once again to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and keep an eye out for the next video.